Thanks for joining us here on Up With Crim. I'm Channing Curtis. And I'm Tim Pham. Let's make it a terrific Tuesday here at 6 o'clock. Gosh, just 30 degrees though. So Oof. meteorologist Thomas Patrick giving us a more detailed look at the forecast. And Thomas, it, uh, I saw some grapple yesterday <laughs> afternoon on my drive home and I was like, he was right. Yeah. It was going to be in the middle of the day. Yeah, and I had some snow here on the South Hill in the afternoon and I was just like, oh, it's grappling again. I looked outside I'm like, no, it's just actually just snowing at that point. And yeah, first week of April, we know is never the best week in April, but this kind of weather will pass, though today will once again be another day with some afternoon rain or grapple or snowfall. We'll have to wait and see how that develops. At the moment, 30 degrees and overcast skies, as you saw over Coeur d'Alene right there, but at least no heavy snow this morning, as we saw over Spangle and Cheney yesterday. A tremendous amount of snow. We heard reports of eight or nine inches of snow on the southern edge of Spokane County. Nothing of the like for today, but that afternoon light precipitation once again in the works, but again with temperatures in the mid 40s, any snow or grapple that would fall at that hour would not stick around for very long. Well, a moment in history is set to unfold in just a few hours. President Donald Trump is expected to face an arraignment on criminal charges in New York City this afternoon. These charges stem from the former president's alleged involvement in a hush money payment to an adult film star before the 2016 election. At the hearing, the indictment against Trump will be unsealed. We'll then know what exact charges he's facing. It's kind of the bread and butter of what the DA's office does. It's the way in which Manhattan prosecutors have historically held those in power responsible for their acts. The judge handling the arraignment ruled last night a handful of photographers will be allowed in the courtroom to take still pictures, but no video. The former president planned a news conference when he returns to his Florida home tonight. The Manhattan District Attorney who filed the charges will also speak following the court's proceedings. Today, jury selection continues in the trial of Lori Vallow. She's on trial for the murder of her two children who went missing more than three years ago. Our Nicole Hernandez is in the newsroom right now. And Nicole, what did the jury selection process look like yesterday? So Tim, the jury selection process started about 945 yesterday morning and lasted all day long. The actual courtroom was closed to the public to protect the potential jurors identities, but the court set up cameras in the room to live stream the process to a separate viewing area. The court sent out initial instructions and information about the case to 1800 people in Boise. Yesterday, the defense and prosecution went through three panels of those potential jurors. They asked each panel how familiar they are with the case and other personal questions. This missing several jurors from each panel for different reasons. Our Boise station talked to a criminal defense lawyer who has no connection to the Vallow trial, and he explains exactly what the prosecution and the defense are doing in this process. You're not actually picking uh, who's going to be on the jury. You're actually picking people who you want off of your jury. You're using your challenges, whether it be a challenge for cause or a peremptory challenge. You're actually uh, picking people who you don't want on your jury. So we're expecting the same process to continue today with even more jurors. The goal is to get to 42 potential people. After that, the rest will be dismissed. And then from that 42, that's where the final 12 jurors and six alternates will come from who will ultimately decide if Fallow is guilty or not. Once jury selection finishes up, we are expecting the trial to last about 10 weeks. In the newsroom, Nicole Hernandez, Crem 2 News. At 6.05, let's take a look at your morning rush. More news in less time. New for you this morning, a Spokane Valley deputy was reportedly attacked by a man he was trying to arrest. Deputies responded to a report of a hit and run on North Cherry Street over the weekend. One deputy saw a man fitting the description of the suspect and approached him. That is when the man began attacking the deputy, eventually punching him in the head. The man continued fighting back and was eventually tasered and arrested. New in the last 12 hours, a Washington man charged in the January 6th riot at the U.S. Capitol pleaded guilty. Jeff Grays from Battleground took selfie-style videos during the riot. He admitted to entering the Capitol with his son. Grays is scheduled to be sentenced in August and could face up to six months in prison. Grays' son was sentenced to 21 days in prison last July. 
Happening now, Pierce County deputies are looking for the person they say tried to trap and kidnap a woman last week in Roy, Washington. Police say the woman was driving when she was forced to stop and remove a box and sandbags blocking the road. Then a man came up from behind her and put a bag over her head. Thankfully, she was able to escape. There is a $1,000 reward being offered for information leading to an arrest. Well, this morning, we are just 80 days away from one of the greatest weekends in Spokane. Of course, we are talking about Hoop Fest. And in order to make the weekend happen, they need volunteers and they are in a big need right now. So they really need court monitors. And don't worry, no experience is necessary. Volunteers, though, do get a set of Under Armour gear, which includes shoes and a shirt, which is pretty awesome. You can sign up to volunteer on Hoop Fest website. Hoop Fest, by the way, runs June 24th through the 25th this year. And that is a look at your morning rush. A Pasco couple accused of murdering their son and torturing two of their daughters has been arrested in Mexico. Two years ago, investigators found two of Araceli Medina and Edgar Salvador Casian Garcia's daughters abandoned in Tijuana, Mexico. U.S. Marshals say both girls showed signs of severe abuse. Pasco police started investigating and discovered the couple's seven-year-old son was also missing. Last year, hikers discovered the missing boy's remains near the Tri-Cities. That couple is now in custody in Mexico and will be extradited to Washington. 607 as we look at our morning commute forecast, no threat of any snow for this morning, so conditions should be good to go. Just a little bit cool and overcast as of right now. This afternoon, once again, a chance for grapple or snow or rain showers that also won't have any major impact on our region. It's just more uh, more activity to work with, like what we've saw in the past three days. You can still see that onshore flow over western Washington, but for now, things are just overcast at the moment. But temperatures are still cool even for early April standards just low to mid 40s for highs today.